Thank so very much. Thank you to all of you who are here today. As I made my way into the cathedral, I was very much aware of all the, the diversity of bonds that hold us together. And I'm very grateful for those who are praying with us through the use of the electronic media, the, the live stream. I pray that this is for all of us a day of blessing. I would particularly like, I hope you won't be offended if I call out two people in particular for being with us today. The first is Bishop Kalabat, the bishop for the Chaldeans here in, well, half of the country really, but uh, we very much take his ownership here in Southeast Michigan. Bishop was my student in the seminary, and I'm very glad he's able to be here today. I also want to particularly recognize uh, Metropolitan Nicholas of the Greek Orthodox Metropolis, uh, headquartered here in uh, Metropolitan Detroit. Uh, Your Eminence, you do us a great honor by being here today. It occurred to me that uh, when we heard St. Paul to the Ephesians, you're a living link to that church, and I'm very happy that you can be with us today. In these few days surrounding the 9th of July, which is my anniversary, the phrase that's been echoing in my head is one that I learned from uh, Monsignor uh, Jerry Martin when I served with him at Sacred Heart Seminary. Very often in his spontaneous prayers to the faithful, he would explicitly pray for those whose salvation is linked with yours in mine. It was a very vivid way to my mind to think about the communion of saints, about our being held together. It is very much with that in, in mind that I think about all of you today about the diversity of bonds that hold us together. And how, what this is really about is our salvation being linked, yours and mine together. As Pope Francis would put it, we are accompanying one another on the way home to the new Jerusalem. And on that path, some of you, I've walked with it, I, I think probably the oldest one here is my brother John, who I got to know in 1951 when he was born. And he performed the very great service of seeing that I had competition and was no longer an only child. <laughs> but that's true for all of us, the, the diverse ways that we are held together and share the grace of God the Father. And so we're here to give God thanks for those graces. This is a particular way to mark an anniversary that we have as disciples of Christ to give God thanks. And it isn't only then for my graces, but it is for our graces. Because over these years, especially these last 25, our salvation has been linked, and so too our graces are shared. Shared graces mean that we need to have shared thanksgiving. And so I would like to make the focus of my preaching today simply, as some of you have heard me do on other occasions, simply to offer a kind of coaching for our common thanksgiving, our shared thanksgiving. And I think the gospel today provides a most appropriate focus for considering why we give thanks and for what we give thanks. 
Because St. Mark gives us an account of Jesus establishing the apostolic ministry. He brought the 12 to him, he summoned them, and he sent them out. By bringing them to himself, he made them his co-workers so that they could be his agents for the establishment of the kingdom. And it's important for us to be clear about that because that explains the foundation, the very root of the graces that I have received and we have shared for these 25 years. These are graces of being engaged, being involved in the same ministry as was entrusted to Peter and Andrew and James and John and Thomas and the others. And so it is for that that we particularly give thanks today. You thanking God for my ministry. I thanking God that you have been part of my ministry. We together giving God thanks for what he continues to do. The gospel indicates that there were two, what we might call focuses, centers, for the ministry of the 12 apostles. The first was teaching, proclamation. Go, Jesus said, and announce the reconciliation. This marvelous mystery of God's saving work. The mystery that St. Paul speaks about so eloquently in the text from Ephesians appointed for our hearing today. So many beautiful ways to summarize what this grace is that we receive through the apostolic ministry. The grace of adoption. Think of that. That we are God's own sons and daughters. When meditating on that, I often think of the words from the exalted at the Easter Vigil, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. To ransom us, to make us his adopted sons and daughters, he handed over his son by nature. We proclaim that in this adoption, we have been made sharers in God's own nature, so that God will see in love in us what he sees and loves in Jesus. Most of you here today are married couples, striving to love one another and your children evermore, to realize that by the apostolic ministry, I realize that by my ministry, I have helped you so that as you strive to love with the love of Christ, God will see and love in you, not something like, but the very spirit with which he sees and loves his son, Jesus. This ministry that God has allowed me to perform for 25 years, that you have had share in and been part of and accompanied me on, is a ministry of establishing the kingdom of God, creating outposts, embassies, one might say, for the kingdom. As we live the life of the church, we experience the mysteries of faith, the sacraments, baptism, confirmation, the sacrament of reconciliation and penance, the anointing of the sick, holy orders, matrimony, and above all, the Holy Eucharist. You here today and many of those on the live stream have been part of my celebration of these holy mysteries. All of you are part of the life of the church, which I am privileged to lead in the name of Christ, 
as a successor to the apostles. And for that, we give thanks. After I finish my preaching, before we proclaim the creed, I'm going to pause. Don't fall asleep. But this will be for us, I hope, an opportunity to listen to the Holy Spirit, to think about what it is that you are particularly grateful for, for our having shared in the work of Christ over these past years. Each of you has some particular thing, some particular grace, for which to be thankful that we have shared together. As I look out at the congregation, it would take too long, but I can look at each of you and identify a grace that we have shared. You do the like. That will be what we are able then to hold in our hearts when I say to you, lift up your hearts. And you say, we lift them up to the Lord. And I say, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And you say, it is right and just. And today is a day to say that with a particular focus, not just in general, but it is right and just for this or that, whatever the grace has been that we have shared. And then a second moment I would coach you about is when we sing Hosanna. Hosanna, which is the Hebrew victory cry. We've won, we're victorious. These are graces we've received because in them, the Father makes us victorious over death. And so, he, through all of our work and our striving, is being victorious and giving life the triumph. And then the third point I'd raise up for you as a coach is the great doxology. When I show the body of Christ to the Father and the deacon shows his blood in the chalice, the blood of Jesus in the chalice, and I say through him and with him and in him, we give praise and thanks to the Father. And what you and I give God praise and thanks for are on that patent and in that chalice today, and we can be sure how pleasing our thanksgiving and praise is to the Father because we are members of Christ and our praise is united with Christ. That's why you've come today. There'll be refreshments later, I'm sure they'll be good, but this is more important. <laughs> so that we can give God praise and thanks together. It would be a great impoverishment for me were you not here. Those of you on the live stream, were you not with us? Because it isn't my 25 years, it's our 25 years. Final point. There is yet more to be done however many years I have as a servant of the church, a minister of Christ, doing the work of the apostles. But more to be done. The gospel has yet to be unleashed. Not all hearts chosen by the Father have yet will come to belong to Jesus. And so this is also a time to renew my commitment, our commitment, to unleash the gospel. But that said, it's also a time to give thanks for what will be. 
I think here particularly of Father Solanus, who always said, thank God ahead of time. And so in our thanksgiving today, join me in thanking him ahead of time for what he will do because he is so good. I'm very grateful to all of you for participating in the sacred liturgy today. This is really the right way to consummate my thanksgiving for the blessings of these 25 years of which you yourselves are part of that blessing. You are blessings for which I give God thanks. St. Paul in the epistle today said that we exist to praise God's glory. That's what we're doing today. And it is a foretaste of how it will be for all eternity when we're all back together again in the Father's house. God bless you. Thank you.